Okay, and we're alive. I'm just going to make sure that the music is not going to overflow my voice this time. Because what fun is art without a little music? We'll just leave the music off for the stream until I can figure it out later. But the good news is the lag is not super bad today. So we can actually get stuff done. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, we did this piece of art on our very first live stream. But uh, it was bad. Not the art, but the video itself. Uh, I had a set of music that was uh, overlaid the channel, and you couldn't hear me. I hadn't learned the art of audio ducking yet. But I have now, and just to be overly cautious, we're going to leave the music out. So this is my home planet Ubun, and it's two moons, and I just want to redo it again, partially because I think I can do it better, and also uh, for the sake of being able to do it with everyone being able to hear me this time. So what I've done... I like the composition of the art we did, so I've just made a sketch layer uh, based on the composition with some improvement notes added. I think this time I also want to include one of the arms from my galaxy in the background, and then also to add uh, more galaxy shapes in the background stars setup. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's get our bluish black color down for the background. And let's change the sketch layer. to a light color so we can see it. Go ahead and move this background. Okay. Uh, and I am working in Procreate. I forgot to mention that earlier. The brushes that I primarily use are from Calvin at Drifter Studios water brush set. You can find him on Etsy and he does have some free brushes on YouTube that you can use. If you go into certain videos he will have free versions of some of these that I'm using today. And then also, Procreate has some pretty good basic brushes included uh, that really help with galaxy painting and textures. So we'll also be using some of the base brushes. And I'm going to start 
with the abstract round brush from Calvina Drifter Studios brush set. And we're going to select this very saturated orange color for our base of Ubu. And I'm not going to worry about the shape too much right now. Uh, we're just going to get down the basic colors. Uh, we'll select a very saturated red for this little moon here. Now this one is in chunks. As I mentioned in the last video, some space friends asked to use the material from it to build some fancy things. And then the space meanies told them to stop and told them we couldn't give them our moons. And then we'll go ahead and select a very saturated light blue for this ice moon behind the planet. Okay, and that's good to start. What I'm going to do is create a shape layer that'll help us um, erase out some of these uh, paintings. So I'm just going to select a random color this layer and then my eraser is modeling we're gonna go ahead and set this layer to multiply so we can see the bottom layers and we're going to erase out a pretty large circle And I think I'm going to switch this to normal at lower opacity so I can see it better. And for the sake of getting the anatomy right on everything, we're just going to do perfect circles and ellipses. We can turn this all the way up and go to our automatic selection tool and get rid of these middle sections. Okay, and that's set up for later. Um, in the sketch layer, real quick, I'm going to add light source uh, cues. So the sun is coming from this direction. Ubun is tidally locked, which means one side is always facing the sun. Uh, and that's this side here. It's very desertous and dry. This side is very cold and icy because it never gets the warmth of the sun. And then it has a habitable zone within the shadow of our large mountain and on the Goldilocks line where it's not too hot, not too cold. There's less lush vegetation and it's a place where the non-extremophile 
creatures can live. Galobians are extreme files in both directions, so we can withstand all the temperatures and environmental hazards throughout the entire planet. So we can be found pretty much anywhere. And now there are other extremophile species on Ubu, uh, but they're usually specialized for just the desert climate or just the snow climate. Uh, but that's stories for later. Uh, so the planet will be casting channel like this. And this moon will be very dark, and this moon will be very light. I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity on our sketch layer so it's not as distracting. And then with our shape layer, I think I'm going to go ahead and refine some of these shapes. So let's go ahead and start with the ice moon. And just erase it, the not so perfect elliptical. And then here, erase for a circle. And then let's go ahead and get the um, front moon taken care of. We're going to follow the curve of the shape helper layer to get the shape correct on the tops and bottoms of this cord out little moon. But we're just going to kind of make this a little more imperfect in the center. Let's go ahead and get rid of Shape Helper layer. Naboon isn't going to be a perfect circle because we do have the large mountain. So we're just going to kind of come most of the way with the Auto Shape tool and then manually erase out the mountain. And that's looking good. So now we're going to auto select an invert and clear out the excess colors uh, in these. Now on the red moon, we do need to go in and erase around the debris before we do that. Just erase out the nice little space chunks. Okay, then we're going to select the bits we want to stay. Select Invert and clear the excess away. Now we'll go to the ice moon and clear it up. Okay, so now we've got our basic colors and shapes for the main objects. 
Let's go ahead and name these layers. I am going to have to use the keyboard because the English language doesn't recognize a lot of Golobian words. We haven't named our moons, so we just call them Fire and Ice or Red and Blue. We have the same naming conventions as Game Freak does for its original Pokemon games, apparently. Okay, and as you can see, the painting layer is rather transparent, so these colors look dark because of the dark background. So the way around that is we're going to duplicate this layer. And we're going to make the bottom one um, completely unsaturated and bump up the brightness. Now this can wash out the color as well, so I'll also just do a regular color duplicate and merge these down. And as you can see, it's standing out from the background color much better. So we're going to repeat that process with the other objects. Just turning down saturation, boosting brightness so it's completely white. And doing the same for this last moon. And this method allows you to make the colors a little less transparent. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the moons because they'll be a little simpler to manage. Let's go ahead and do the red moon to begin with. So we're going to create a new layer. Let's do a coping mass layer. And we're going to go add details to this little one. So for brushes, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the water uh, base brush that comes with Procreate. I believe you can find it uh, over here in one of these original uh, files. Let me find it for you so you can find it on your own if you want to. Now in Luminance I do use Nebula and Glimmer a lot now and we'll be using those later. Okay, so it's in Elements, and it's the third brush. We're going to go back to the original color of the moon, and we're going to darken and desaturate the color a little. And we're going to go into the main area. Let's turn this down. And we're going to make a pass, and this will help give the appearance of trenches and valleys or cracked ground. And we're going to shape warp it to be spherical. 
and you do that by pinching in the outside edges and blowing up the center. And we'll leave it like that. Go ahead and let's make a new clipping glass layer above it. And then I like to use Calvin's Drips and Splatters brushes. I'll go ahead and select Mist and Drips 26 in the brush palette. And we're going to bring the size way down because our object's small. Not quite that small. Okay, and we're going to come in here and just make a few strokes to give it some crater-like textures. And I'm going to extend it to these larger stones floating out as well. And then we'll do another um, clipping mask layer. And this time we'll go back to the original color and lighten and desaturate. And then with the same brush selected, we're just going to go make a pass in these areas. And we're going to adjust the brightness so it's a little more prominent. I'll up the saturation a little. And I'm going to merge these two crater shapes together. And I'm going to freehand select the splatters in the planet. And again, do our spherical warp. And as you can see, even though it's quite a small object, it's got some nice detail in it. Let's go ahead and merge all these together. And then with our freehand selection tool, we're going to select the back side and feather it out so the edge is soft. And we're going to darken it. And this will be the shadowed part of the moon. And we're going to make a second shadow pass. It would be much darker in this crescent area. So we're going to feather it out a bit. and then decrease the darkness. Let's go ahead and turn off our sketch layer so we can get a better view. I'm also going to go back and select some of the edges of the smaller surrounding planet bit to darken. And these ones in the back are going to be mostly dark.
Okay, now we're going to do a pass, but for the opposite. Uh, we're going to make things a little lighter. But before I do that, I'm going to select some of these chunks to copy and move. Just to fill out the space a little better. And I may distort them a little just to give them some better visual interest. And we're also going to get uh, some that go in front of the planet here. And we'll differentiate their shapes here in a bit. Uh, so I'm going to turn down the opacity on the moon later. Uh, but for now, let's just mess with our shape a little. Just so it's kind of its own thing. Just to make sure we're on the base layer here. Trying to squish up her shape a little. And then we'll move it. Maybe change its size. Go ahead and get rid of these empty layers. We'll merge down the objects that are on the outer edges. So we're going to leave the ones above and the ones that we're going to put behind here in a minute on separate layers so we can mess with their shadows. I'm going to warp these a little, just so that they're not exact copies. And then with these ones, I'm going to move it under the moon layer, and these will be our behind shapes. And I think I'm just going to duplicate this layer. And we'll get some behind shapes coming out from this side. That way we can capture the effect of the chunks orbiting around what's left of the moon. Let's go ahead and warp these a little. There's good 
I'll go ahead and merge the behind layers together and the forefront layers together. Now I'm going to decrease the visibility of the moon and we'll hide the back layer just so we can work on the forefront elements first. Uh, we're just going to go in here and select the edges. at the back of these objects. Other than just slightly. And darken them slightly. And then let's select the front of the edges. Feather it a bit and then lighten them. So, as you can see, that does help a little. Now, let's go ahead and get the lighting on this side of the moon uh, done. That way we can figure out which places need to stand out better from the background. So we're going to lighten this quite a bit. And then again it's going to be a little brighter in this crescent section. We're going to feather it and lighten it a bit more. Okay, so now we can see, let me get my fine liner brush, uh, we can see that this object there needs to stand out a little better. The edge of this one needs to stand out a little better. And this one is fine. And we'll just fix the lighter edge on this one here. Let's go ahead and select the appropriate layer again. And with our freehand tool, we're going to select the edges of the objects that need the most assistance. Cover it just a bit. And we're going to this around with the brightness. So that does help these front objects stand a lot out a lot better. Uh, let's work with these two in the back. And on these ones, the light edges are fine, really just down here on this bottom chunk. We need to make stand out better. So I think what we'll do is kind of a Drastic darkening. So 
Well, that may be too much. Let's undo that. So what we'll do, let's duplicate this. The bottom layer, we're going to turn down the brightness significantly. We're going to move them slightly so it looks like they're casting a shadow onto the moon below. Like so. And that does help them stand out a little better. Go ahead and merge those. And let's work on the color for the chunks that are in the midsection. And we're going to add the highlights for these ones. And then these back ones are going to remain relatively dark, but we're going to darken them overall to kind of get a sense of the shadow of the planet casting over them. And then this one here and the edge of this one are going to be a little darker because it's a small enough object that the light wraps around it pretty uh, efficiently. So the outer edges here for this back chunk and a little effect area on the back of the watermelon shaped chunk is going to be just a tad brighter. Okay. Now let's move on to the back chunks. We're going to do the same thing where we mess with their color to lighten them. The edges on the left side here are going to be bright. I forgot to feather that, so let's Go back to our selection and make sure those edges are soft. And then the backs of these left ones, a very small area, are going to be darker because of the shadow just to get them to stand out. And then on the back part, we're going to make these just a tad darker overall. And then the very backs are going to be the darkest. And I think 
That's looking sufficient. So I am happy with the overall tone. Now let's go ahead and add some more details to the surface of our moon. Is that a clipping mask? And then with our darker red tone, we'll go back to the drips and splatters section and just select some random stamp. Uh, stamps. Uh, we're going to have to turn on the signs. And this will just give the surface some better character emphasis in some places. Okay, let's do our sphere warp. to merge all these together. And I think we are done with our little red moon here. I do see an issue. So here in our backgrounds, there's this asteroid here that I neglected. So just too bright. It doesn't have enough depth. And there's also the faintest pixel there just floating in space. So we're just going to make the back end darker. I think its position is not going to be in the shadow of the moon. So we'll just get a general darkening. And then let's lighten this front edge. And that's much better. It's never too late to do some edit. Never too late to fix things. And now let's move on to our ice moon. And we're going to do pretty much the same method. We're going to add some texture. And I'll use the base water texture. And do a darker desaturated color. Just paint in some nice little craggles. Both the 
small object and the main moon. And that's looking good. So I'm going to fix up some of the edge here. Go ahead and turn up my eraser. We don't want the edges to be perfect. Very few objects in space are perfectly uh, shaped. So we'll make it a little wobbly to get rid of these jagged, pixelated edges. And then fix some areas of interest. Now back to our water layer. We're going to select just the main spheroid rock and shape orbit. Now we're going to do an elliptical warp. We're just going to bring in the edges. I'll bring in these edges a smidge, but not much. And then widen the center while pinching in the edges. I'm going to do a quick before and after check, and that's certainly looking more interesting. And then for the smaller orbiting object, we're going to do a sphere warp. Let's add our speckles. Back to the number 26 mist and drops brush. And we're doing really good with the lag. It looks like the latency is pretty low today. So the internet gods have decided to bless us which is rare, because they're spiteful. Okay, and then let's select our lighter desaturated color for the light speckle layer. I actually think it needs to be far more desaturated. And that is looking better. Make sure we get some on the little sphere. Let's go ahead and adjust this. So it's a little more common. And then we'll merge our speckle layers together. And do the same thing where we select and warp to the appropriate shapes. So we'll make this one a sphere.
Here, let me do this one. Nice off oh, bottom sheet. And I am going to go in here and clean this up a little. For example, there wouldn't be a crater where there's a crack necessarily. So we're going to get rid of some of the overlapping textures. And I don't need to get rid of all of them, just some of the more egregious um, shapes. Like this one here. It's okay to leave like these little speckles in the trench. It gives it some depth, but they don't go outside the edges. Like this one. So it doesn't throw off the down. Go ahead and do a check over here. Looking good. So I'm going to merge all these together. And we're going to adjust the color overall. Let me turn back the sketch. So as you can see, if you remember, the ice moon is going to be very dark because it is in the shadow of Ubu. So let's go ahead and darken it and desaturate it a little. And then let's go in let's add some splatter stamps let's go ahead and select our new darker color that's a little too dark this one's acceptable And we're just going to select these. And change them to fit our object. And since these are quite dark, I'm going to turn down the saturation enough to where it matches the cracks. So it looks like the cracks go into 
this crater shape. And then I'll merge them. So I'm liking the texture of this. Let's just go ahead and change the brightness on the edges. So even though these are in a shadow themselves, I want to give them a little more visual interest. Let's turn on the sketch layer again. Okay, and I think I'm going to just darken some of these edges just to give them a little more visual appeal. Just like that. And I think it will be good uh, for the ice swim. Let's go ahead and move on to the main planet. Now I am going to select the base layer. Turn on my light sketch. And I'm going to roughly select the back half here and further it out. We're going to change the hue. Should be a nice blue tone back here. And the brightness needs to be darkened. Lower the saturation. And I'm going to clean up the part where the mountain joins the planet over here. And let's go ahead and do a wobbly outline for the edge here. Just slightly. That's not perfect. Now let's do a clipping layer. We're going to select this nice yellow green tone. And I'm going to change back to the fine liner brush from Kelvin's set, his basic watercolor brush set. And I'm going to go along the rough edge of the seat the shaded part of the mountain. And in the Goldilocks region, here in the center of the planet,
and I am going to slightly warp this. And then we'll go fix the edges. We're going to make it thinner on the edge over there and then kind of thick in the middle here then we'll add some straggling patches And then we'll add some island patches on the side. And some peninsulas. And then we'll do a layer below here. Let's select this blue, lighten it, and desaturate it. And then get some water features placed down. on the desert side. Some little lakes and oases. And now above the greenery, we're going to add rivers and lakes and fix up some of these shapes from the edges here.
What you do, sir? Fresh size for our rivers. I'll just lay down some shapes. Just checking on library, and we're almost one for one. I think that's the best we've had. Go ahead and turn the brush size up again. Let's get some land lakes going. I'm going to connect. Some of these to the river systems. And then we'll have some independent. Our beautiful kidney river. The Libyans don't have organs, and I find it weird that humans have two of some organs as well. The closest thing I have to organs is my eye spots. And they really just help me tell what's light and dark. I'm sure I have two of them, but... It's not two whole organs with complex systems. Let's get some more rearrange links. Just where there needs to be visual interest. Okay. That's good. I'm just going to go back to the standard brush set 
and select the water blender brush. And I'm going to decrease it and break up the color here so it flows from the light blue to the uh, dark blue a little better. And then on another clipping mask layer, I'm going to select a grayish white. And I have created a brush that I like to use for eyes. And I just use it uh, to make eyes effects. It's just a photo of a really dry desert ground, and I think it does beautifully for Isofix. Let's go ahead and pin down an ice shape. And I think that's too large. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the brush settings. And we're going to change the grain scale. And that's better. So we're just gonna get this down loosely. And then I'm going to erase the shape down into better positions on the edges here. Okay, then let's warp it to make it look more spherical. Let's go ahead and uh, merge all these down. And the reason I'm merging so often, uh, I am using one of Calvin's water um, color paper textures, the background cold press. And as you can see, it helps give a nice texture throughout the whole image. Uh, but as a side effect, it's a pretty large file, so we have to keep our layers down. I believe it's a 22 layer maximum limit, so we want to keep everything kind of compressed. Now that these are merged, let's go ahead and create some effects on the desert side. So let's go and get our water brush again. 
And then from our orange color, darken it. Let's paint in some valleys. Now we do have an atmosphere and we're not drilled into. So we're going to have fewer and smaller fissures in the crust than on the fire moon back there. And then let's get these to look more like they're following the curve of the planet. And I know they're not really showing up on video, uh, but these do look quite nice in person. We also don't have craters because of our atmosphere. Helps blast away those pesky space visitors that seek to Land a little too harshly. Go ahead and put those down. And since lag is down, uh, we're going to try and shoot for a full three hour video. Let's work on the overall brights and darks. So we're going to select the shadow of the mountain and most of the backside here. And we're just going to darken this a bit. And then we're going to make a second pass here at the back, and this is going to be darker. And then one more pass at the very back, and this is going to be the darkest point on the planet. And then we'll select the front part here and do the opposite. We'll make this brighter. A little bit, decrease the saturation. And then selecting some of the brightest areas. I forgot to feather there, I think. Now these edges are looking uh, kind of sharp in contrast to each other. So we're going to go to the Galaxy watercolor brush set from Calvin and select the Galaxy Blender. Let's turn this down in size and then just soften some areas. 
to its size. Stark in its contrast. Now we don't want to blend too close to the edge there or we'll lose it. So we need to be careful on that. Okay, and that's looking good. Let's take a step back and embrace its glory for a second. So there's still a few things we need to do on the main planet. Uh, we'll get some cloud cover and a sandstorm on the desert side, a blizzard on the ice side, and we'll add an atmospheric layer. Then we'll begin work on the background. But the moons are finished, I believe. The only thing we might add to them later is some lighting adjustments, I think. But for right now, they're nice on their own. Let's get started. And we'll start with cloud cover. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, splatter brush set. And we're going to and a grayish white, get down some splatters on new layer. And we're going to turn up their size. And we're just going to get a bunch of clumpy stamps down at a pretty large size. Just kind of mainly in the places where there's water. There aren't going to be as many clouds on the desert side because there's not a lot of moisture on that side to produce clouds. But there are some that come over on the region close to the Goldilocks zone, but never really on the far side where the light hits the most and is the hottest. Luckily, Yaboon has a dense enough atmosphere that the planet doesn't catch on fire in that zone very often. There's not really a lot for way of things to catch fire over there. Nothing grows there. Colobians are non flammable. No one builds there for the species that come to see us. Now, Colobians, since we don't really need shelter or goods or services, we don't have buildings. We just kind of sit in the open most of the time. Or in a nice crevice on top of a nice rock to soak in that sunlight. But otherwise, uh, we're just pretty free-floating. We don't have a lot of infrastructure, and what little infrastructure that is on the planet is from visitors or from our new friend species on the ice side. And in the desert, 
the only things you'll see on that far side of the planet are another extremophile species that we grew up with. So let's, uh, this is a good general cloud cover. Let's warp this to the sphere of the planet. Just kind of get the lines to line up with the edges. I actually passed it a little bit. Because since the clouds are in the atmosphere, they will follow the atmosphere's edge. And you'll notice it's floating out the edge a little. If you look at pictures of Earth from space, it's very similar. So this was just a nice general cloud cover. Let's add a layer under for our blizzards. And I'll do much the same, but these are going to be a little darker. And I'm going to Put in some random stamps, these ones much closer together and overlapping frequently. We're going to rely on these chunky ones quite a bit. Now I'm going to do some liquefying uh, twist just to get the storm effect. Now this one is set too high. We want to make sure distortion is done. And we'll just create some nice storm circles. And since one's all right, let's get a little left turn on this side. That won't turn out nice enough, so let's do it again. Some nice twist in some areas. And now we're going to work the object to the curve of the atmosphere. Let's go ahead and get everything squeezed in. Ibun does have frequent blizzards and sandstorms in their respective regions. Uh, just due to the fact that we're a very windy planet, extremely windy planet, because one side is always super heated and the other is always super cold, 
and the air is always clashing and swirling. It's not really a problem for most species on the planet. Those of us complex species are pretty low to the ground. Um, in case you didn't know, I'm only like three foot one. But the uh, friend species that is now staying with us on the ice side has shelters to protect themselves from the winds and they rarely venture out. And then the species on the desert side uses burrows so they don't have to deal with the wind if they don't want to. Now, so let's go ahead and finish this shape. So that's nice. I'm going to do a layer in between these two and I'm going to fill out this back end. It's looking kind of fair. So we're just going to get some heavy splatters in there and bring them down to shape. And I'm going to warp the shape to mainly the outer edges because that's where we need the cover. Let's do this again. The regions that need it. So it's looking kind of flat. Let's round this out a bit better. I'm going to merge our two darker cloud layers together and darken them a little more. And then I'm also going to darken the top clouds a bit more. Just a switch. Okay, we're doing good. Let's work on the sandstorm side. Now sandstorms don't look like clouds from space. So we're going to try and get some different textures down to indicate some sandstorms. So first let's get a nice orangish sand tone. Go ahead and create a new layer. And then let's find some nice textury uh, brushes that may help us 
So we can try water. Now this is too close to the original tone, so we need to brighten it quite a bit. We're going to get in some bright spots as well to kind of simulate the light coming off the top of some of these. Now let's go ahead and blur this layer. Let me shape it. And that's good for our, our general roaming wind dust. But we also want a larger sandstorm. Let's get a new layer. Select maybe a lighter color. And let's try to make another pass of this. On this one, we do want it to come out of the edge of the planet a little to kind of give it that sand and the atmosphere feel. And I'm going to duplicate the layer and let's kind of shift and move these into a place where it fills some of the spaces better. Okay, let's merge these three down and alert with the Gaussian blur. Not enough to where we lose the highlight texture, but enough to eliminate any solid feel. And then under all these layers, I think I'm just going to take the soft brush, put a slightly darker tone, and we're going to go under and just create some sandy overall color texture following the pattern. And let's blur this a bit more as well. And then on the top one, let's also do a liquify twist in some places. Not too dramatically in some areas, just a slight wave. And then we'll make a big circle here for interest sake. And the fact that it's a very windy planet, so tornadoes are quite frequent. Let's twist up these edges a little. Turn off the distortion.
And I think that's nice. Let's go ahead and march our clothes down in our dust. And then let's get an outer atmosphere. So with a white color, pure white, and then with the monoline brush, which comes in the calligraphy main set um, with Procreate, we're going to do a circle around the planet. We're going to need to move this into a little better position and fill it. We're going to turn this opacity down and shrink it so it falls the cloud cover better, but not so that the mountain is sticking up out of the atmosphere. And then we're going to slightly blur it as well, just so that the edges aren't perfect. We're going to select the back layer and darken it slightly as well. Uh, just because atmospheric light tends to follow the shade of the object as well, to a slight degree. Okay, and that concludes the work on the boom. We'll go ahead and merge all these down. And now we've got our main uh, objects completed. Uh, now I think we're going to go ahead and work on the background portion. So let's go ahead, group these three together, and we'll just title the group Main Objects. And then we'll create a new layer. So there are two main uh, background features we want to get. Let's go ahead and go to the Galaxy Water Brush Set by Calvin. We'll select Fiery Nebula. And then we'll, we're going to get a nice uh, orangish red. The color doesn't really matter. The brush itself has different color dynamics to it. So if you see, depending on the pressure and everything, you can get different hues. We're going to turn our brush up. And we're going to kind of get a nice shape in here. We'll adjust the colors separately. And then let's get the Rainbow Nebula placed down. Just kind of in a different place. Okay, let's adjust the colors. So 
Same thing with the nebula layer. And then with the galaxy brush turned up, go ahead and break up some of these edges. Now behind these, we're going to take a light blue and we're going to switch to the nebula brush. It comes in the luminous set and the base procreate uh, package. We're going to create a portion of one of the arms of our galaxy shape. We'll use it to kind of frame the image. Let's go ahead turn this up. Now, let's create a new layer. Get our soft brush. And get a light brown tone. Let's turn down. The opacity with the brush to be a bit bigger. Let's brighten and saturate this significantly. And we'll just hit the edges. Mix it brown. Let's turn off our main objects real quick. And we'll give it a dark color. And just randomly darken some places here. going to warp the shape a little to follow the curve a bit better. Now with our smudge tool I'm going to select the fiery nebula brush and we're just going to go in to these edges and kind of push back on this color help break up the edge we're going to go pretty far in in some places to kind of give it a broken up feel
Okay, and then with our liquify tool, we're going to lightly twist up these edges as well. That'll give it a more gassy swirl to it. And we'll switch between right and left swirls. We're also going to push our swirls around a little too. And I am going to turn up distortion a little. Periodically. Let's go ahead and compress this down. We're going to slightly blur it because it is pretty far away. And then we're going to do a curves adjustment. We want to really brighten the edges. I think there. We don't want it too green. Let's go ahead and get our soft brush again. We'll select some of this light yellow and on a new layer. We're just going to go in and add some more gas. Just a little bit. Okay, and let's add uh, with our soft brush a kind of dark maroon. I had a pretty small size on a new layer. Let's get even smaller than that. We're just going to add some accent. We're also going to mess up the edges of these a bit.
Let's reduce the opacity slightly. I think actually we need to lower it quite significantly. And then let's add kind of this vibrant purple. And we'll add a secondary accent area towards the tail. So still a soft brush. Nice soft accent purple. And then we're also going to liquefy the edges. And we're going to lower the layer opacity. And then we're going to add in light blue. I like the Milky Way. We can see the arm of our galaxy sometimes. Uh, however, we're a barrel galaxy. And so instead of having the spiral arms like the Milky Way, we have uh, a bit of a bar that reaches out from the center of our galaxy before the tendrils form. I'm going to turn on my main object and make sure everything looks good. And I think I'm satisfied with this. Now let me just show you I'm going to go ahead and get modeling to show you. Over here I'll show you a spiral galaxy. Like Earth. It's kind of like this. And then a barrel galaxy. Like Gaboons kind of does this. So there's these bars that come out from a little bit. And then the arms extend out from that. Okay. Uh, so now let's add our stars. So let's collapse down before we collapse this galaxy arm actually. I'm going to push it back in some places. And then we'll twist it. It's just a little too aggressive in some areas. Of course we want to leave it bigger towards the end. This is the tail reaching further out 
And then with our liquify tool, we'll just go and do some random waves. And I'm also going to lower the opacity. Now let's merge these together. And I'm going to leave this limit separate right now, so let's rename it. Barrel. Arm. So let's get some stars down. Now the Glimmer brush comes with the Procreate uh, base brushes. It's in the luminance section. This one I have edited it by going over here and down to dynamics. I've changed the size and the jitter of the sizes so we can get a better depth of field. So I'm also going to go ahead and change it and we're going to try and Uh, change its size so it's not as... change the spacing so they're not as close together. Let's go ahead and get that. Turn on the general all the way. And we're going to select a light blue color and at a large size. Let's just go and add a random scattering. And then on a new layer, we're going to turn spacing down so it's much more thick. We're going to turn our sides down and fill up some of this backspace. We're also going to turn the opacity down slightly since they're farther away. They wouldn't be as bright. And then above the cloud layers, I think I'm going to opt for some yellowish stars. And we're going to Add a bunch of stars in this cloud. Just add a bunch of varying shapes. Or sizes, I mean. That way we can indicate that this is a uh, gassy formation that lends to the creation of some stars. And then for this main back area, I'm going to break up a little bit of these edges. Bring this in so you can see it a little better. Now we're going to go through and some more light blue stars, very small scale. Now with the glimmer brush along 
the arm. We're going to do the, the small scale and then get a bit larger. And then we zoom in so you can see. Something else we can do. Uh, if we go down to the elements brushes, I believe. Which are base brushes. Um, with Procreate, I'm going to take the Driven Snow. And let's get a yellowish brown tone. I'm just going to create a random bit here and then we're going to get a pretty decent size of liquify. Uh, let's turn down distortion all the way. Just going to make a little spiral. It seems like I didn't do this on its own layer. So let's do that. We're going to use the distort. And let's take our soft brush. And we're going to turn it down. Turn up the opacity. Put a nice little thing. I'm going to put that in the distance. And then let's get just a nice set of a blonde galaxy. Let's go ahead and change the color. just in random places. Add a little uh, oval objects. Most galaxies will be an oval shape with the exception of maybe an elliptical galaxy which uh, just to give you an example The uh, elliptical galaxy can't help if I was above everything. Uh, the elliptical galaxy kind of has a center, and then its arms kind of go around it like this. Like an elliptical. And then there are some galaxies that don't have a lot of form. And they have a bright center, but they just have a bunch of free floating gas that's not in any particular pattern. Over here, I'm just going to correct this, get rid of anything that's 
over here. Okay. Back to soft brush. And let's change this shade again. Just add. Get more objects. Yeah, I'm going to merge these backgrounds together. And let's go ahead and get our little Colobian inbound. And because we have this barrel arm coming down now, I don't think we'll do a comet like we did in the last video. So let's just get a little Golovian to uh, draw the eye this direction back towards the planet. So let's go and get the fine liner brush. We're gonna put a little ship in. Let's figure out a position for it. Here's good. Then we're going to erase the top edge. And then we'll do our little auto select and clear it. Now, underneath, let's get our glass. And it looks like there was a pixel edge left. So let's go back to that layer and erase any lingering pixels from that old shape. This needs to be fixed a little bit. I can tell it is not center. So let's center it and get it back into position. Pull the glass down to about 35. And then we're still going to do a nice little red gel. We're going to get a little eye spot. And then let's 
sucked. Why? And just get down. Now we need to be on a new layer. Oh, we'll just get down. Some of the lighter spots in the gel. You don't have to make the edges perfect. We'll go back and make this a clipping layer. the opacity in these. Make sure it is set to clipping to the bottom gel. And then we'll make our top layer and bring it down to about 30. And then merge these. We've got our little galobian. Now let's finish up the Details on the ship, given the little feet, Colobian ships have three little feet, one in the back and two in the front, so I'll make this one in the back larger than the two in the front. It has light, so people can see it's coming. There was a bit of a space incident, and the meanies were really upset with us. Our new ice friends had sent us on an errand to help them, and we wound up crashing through the ship because we didn't have lights, and Galobian steering isn't the greatest because we don't have any life preservation skills because we don't really need to preserve our life. We're pretty much indestructible. So now we have to put lights on all of our ships so they can see us coming just in case. That's too long. Just getting down some light shape. Let's go ahead and fix the edge of this one here. And make this a little more protrudy. And then we'll duplicate this. Set the top layer um, to add and blur it out. And 
Fill all the opacity slightly. Just to give it a glowy look. And then we'll go add some darker ship uh, accents. Okay, let's just add, merge these down. We'll leave the add layer separate. Unfortunately, Procreate does not have good merging when it comes to effect layers. Often it loses its effect when you merge down. And there's not really a fix that always works with it. So, uh, just underneath the ship, we'll select pure white, get our little travel path placed down. And since we want to be drawing the eyes in, we're going to have the tail. Uh, flow appropriately. And then we're going to blur this. And lower the opacity slightly. Okay, let's take one last overall look at everything. Let's look at it small. Look at it big. And I think that I am satisfied with the exception that I can't really see the eyeballs here. That's okay. Gills have tiny eyes. So I think that this is an overall improvement. Let's go ahead and merge as many of these as we can. Let's try this trick that sometimes works, where if you have a normal layer of the same object... No. It's gonna be difficult. So I guess we'll just group these. And we'll say new version. We have the version we completed today, and this was the one we had done in our first stream. So I do like on the original, there is a bit of a glass glare on the ship. So we're going to go back and add that. And I think I'm going to move the main objects back a little. I also need to add in the light from the sun and the cast shadows. Now on this one, all of the objects stand out pretty well. So I don't think I need to go back 
and highlight or darken any areas. Let's go ahead with our fine liner brush and add a, add a nice little flash shine. Fill the opacity, merge. Okay, let's add light. Put a new layer. Let's get an orangish yellow tone. And fine liner brush is okay. You can use the monoline brush for this. But I'm going to go with the line of cast light. And we're also going to get this part of the planet. i make sure everything's connected. We're going to turn this opacity way down, almost to the point that it's invisible. We're going to duplicate it and get an add layer. And we're going to blur this layer very significantly. And then this one, we're going to blur it just so the edges are soft. Now we're going to lower the opacity on these. In this way, you can kind of see the way the shadow is cast. Let's also go here, select the inverse. And we're going to add a dark blue. Let's go ahead and get that on its own layer so we can adjust it accordingly. We're going to change this to multiply. Lower it again until it's just kind of invisible. We'll unselect the edges and blur it out just so it's not hard. I think we're going to turn this up a bit just to darken it. And I think that's good. That's my home planet and our moons. So we're doing good on time. We've got about 25 minutes left. So let's go ahead and restart another project. Let me just give you guys one last look. It's kind of Zoom in. Make sure we're not erasing things. Take a tour of the place.
Okay. Now, in the last stream, we started this project. However, the uh, the recording was so lagged, it was an hour behind, and it was my first stream, so I went ahead and pressed end stream, and it cut off an hour of content. So we missed finishing the last one and the start of this one. So first things first, I think I'm just going to give you an overview of what everything is. So this is my home system. Here is Aboon and our news. We have a set of binary ring planets over here. This is a rocky planet. This is a gas giant that's in our system. And these here are its moons that'll go on top of it. And then we have a visitor object that comes and sees us every once in a while. It's because our gas giant is large enough to bring in visitors and every now and then it keeps some friends. And that's how it got most of its moons. Naboon is a very simple planet. Not really, but we live in a very simple system and it really was just the five planets, but our big friend here likes to pull in new friends. So let's go ahead and get started with some base colors. Let's go ahead and get our yellow color, get the abstract round brush, and let's just... <laughs> no, we don't have a triangle set. We'll just get in some nice base colors down. Let's go ahead and get the boons and our moons. We'll get a color down for our gas giant. Get a nice dark gray for our sometimes visitor. A brown color for our lucky friend over here. And then we'll get some colors laid out for these binary planets. Now that just means they kind of rotate around each other like a moon and a planet would. But they are both planets. They're too big to be a moon of one another.
And something that I forgot to talk about in our introduction was the Solar Collector. It doesn't belong to anyone from our galaxy. Uh, there's some space friends that just asked if they could use our star. And this is a very basic planet map. It's not going to be accurate to scale. It's basically a pamphlet version of Welcome to Our System. Uh, so it's a top-down perspective, but everyone orbits around the sun differently. For example, the planets and objects tend to orbit in this pattern. So our space friends put their solar collector up here. So it doesn't interfere with any of the light. And I put the solar collector's color down on another layer. So let's go ahead and separate it. That way everything's just nice and by itself. Now I'm going to adjust the size and placement to be a little more appealing. We'll put our gas giant over there. We're going to move a boom. But by itself. And because it is tidally locked, this side will always face the sun. We're just going to place some of these. Uh, this planet slightly bigger than a boom. So I'll try to represent that. We're just going to try and balance the map out a little. Go ahead and move the boom back. And let our sun's a little bigger. Let's turn off our sketch. Okay, there's still some balance issues. Let's get that worked out. Okay, this looks uh, acceptable. Let's go ahead and clean up 
our shapes. And then we'll probably uh, end the stream there for the day. Let's go ahead. Luckily, this shape kind of has a nice mountain lump to it. So we're going to kind of erase our circle close to it. We'll erase this general circle. Get the chord shape. Get our oblong. And our little circle for our rotating object. Go ahead and turn the scale on this up a bit, just so everything's a little uh, better result. Now this object, its shape changes every time it visits us. It goes on a long journey. It probably has other friends to visit. Let's just get a nice general shape. Get the little spaceport lamp moved out.
and then the arms. Make the edges less pointy. It's not a very stabby object. Unless you break it. And then it'll have many stabby objects. The uh, station isn't as pronounced as it is there. We've got our basic shapes down, and I think we've got everything set up for next week. Uh, we'll finish this project up. Okay, so. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, we won't be streaming tomorrow. Tuesday we usually stream uh, music making an FL Studio. Uh, but I'm going out onto the town with Ham. So it's a me and Ham day. But we will be back Wednesday. We'll be playing Dawn of Man again. And I'm going to be such a perfect person parent. No more shoes will die on my watch. But until then, thank you and have fun, Spray Friends. Until next time, bye!